Hi, I'm Nigel and we are continuing our study guide on Think Right. And uh, today I was thinking about uh, some students who are currently writing their MTH thesis proposals and uh, was looking at whether this book, like they're actually buying this book right now and how I could give them a quick uh, explanation of what is in there that could be useful for them. So we straight away go to uh, chapter number 23, uh, which is how to write a thesis proposal. Now again, uh, some of you have already started writing your thesis proposals, already have a sense of how you want to do this. Uh, but some of you may be struggling, and especially in the kind of comments that you're getting. So uh, I'll just give you a brief explanation of what this chapter says, at least some parts of it, so that you'll have a sense of, okay, these are the expectations and this is perhaps a way that I can move forward. Uh, the thesis proposal is a document written before the MTH thesis that lays out the plan for the proposed research project. So I've just basically read that bold. Uh, in the last video I said that every, every introduction, every chapter will have one sentence which is in bold and that sentence is, summarizes that entire chapter. So this is basically saying what is a thesis proposal and how to do it. And I would like to say that basically there are, um, I mean, three main parts of a thesis proposal. That's, that's right over here in this, uh, in page number 176. Uh, the first part of a thesis proposal is establish the problem. Some people might say survey the landscape or uh, do uh, establish your uh, research question or something like that, but it's, it's really the way I've done it in this book is first you need to establish the problem which is why are you doing this project and also is there an academic issue that you're going to address in your work? Why are you writing an MTH thesis to address an issue? What are the academic reasons to do so? This, that is establishing the problem. So that's the first part you have to do in your thesis proposal. I'll explain that a bit more. Then the second thing is you need to establish what is the methodology you're going to use to, est to address that problem. So in the first part is establish your problem. The second part is in your thesis proposal, establish your methodology. How are you going to address it? And in the third part of your thesis proposal, you need to have a section that anticipates your thesis where you give a sense that you know what is happening, where you give a sense that uh, you have a sense that you know where this work is going to go. You don't have to decide your entire work, but you need to have a sense towards where you're going. So first problem, then have a sense of your methodology and have a sense of your thesis or, or at least your anticipated thesis. So those are the three elements of a thesis proposal and different people have, different institutions may have different emphasis. Some may emphasize the first part as more important, some may emphasize the second part as more important, like a methodology. I was showing this to a, a friend of mine and he looked at the methodology and he said for the MTH level, uh, sometimes this methodology may be a bit too intense. Uh, not everybody would have the same requirements and I agree that some colleges don't emphasize so much on methodology for their MTH students. Whereas for the PhD, methodology is the key. Like you need to make sure that your methodology is strong. So uh, depending on where you are, just get a sense of methodology if you're an MTH thesis proposal writer, but you don't have to have such extensive methodological awareness that a PhD student needs to have. Okay, but with that said, what do these three parts mean? Establishing a problem. According to this, here is where you have, uh, you state you first give us a sense of why you're writing this paper. What, what is the personal context that you're facing that leads you to write this, this thesis? So it could be your church, it could be your context, social, uh, the social realities around you. These are the problems facing society. It can be uh, drug addiction, it can be uh, family conflicts, or it can be church doctrinal issues. It could be difficulty in understanding the Bible. There could be many practical issues facing the church today. But then, after that, after stating your own personal reason, uh, personal rational, I can call it a personal rational, then you need to have a literature review. Now, this literature review, and there's a whole chapter just prior to that, uh, chapter 22 on how to write a literature review uh, over there. But uh, 
rather than uh, getting to the details, basically a literature, uh, this general literature review is you survey what people have said about this topic that you've chosen, about this uh, this main issue. So if let's say you're talking about drug addiction, what have scholars said about drug addiction? And don't just present one point of view. Try to present two or three different points of view, two or three different types of ways of addressing drug addiction. Like that, if there's an interpretation problem of how to interpret the Bible, uh, don't just interpret, show, or oh, this is how people are interpreting. Show a variety of ways that people are interpreting scripture to show that there's a problem that not all scholars agree on how to interpret scripture. So that's where the a general literature review is where you survey the field where you sorry field means you survey the field of literature you survey the scholarship to show that what is there what what is happening uh, in among scholarships about your topic and then over here it says taxonomy you need to have a taxonomy and this is in the theology theology department we lo love this word taxonomy it basically means classification now that you have surveyed the field classified the field the classify the information into like three or four charts no sorry not charts three or four types like okay some people interpret the scripture like this some people interpret like this and some people interpret like this or some theologians will say or oh, some are pluralist some are syncretist and some are uh, exclusivist you know you you categorize groups of scholars into three or four types it sometimes it may seem like a simplification but it helps you to group large amount of data into small chunks so that you can manage it so that's the taxonomy and then you have the statement of the problem which is so therefore what is the problem now it is at this point where practical theology uh, theses are different from uh, let's say a biblical studies thesis or, a, or or theology thesis where so when we say statement of the problem for some people the problem is the problem facing the church but in academic terms a problem is a problem facing scholarship facing academia so it's an academic problem so yes a problem is related to the church related to society related to real life but it also has to do with an academic issue that's related to the books that we are reading so that is what needs to be stated so if your proposal has a clear sense of the literature that is around you and has a clear sense that you know what groups of literature there are. That, okay, there are one group, there's another group, and there's another group. And you're able to find a problem within that, where you can see that there's a debate happening in scholarship about your topic. Then you have established your problem. That's the first part. And I find that if you're able to establish your problem correctly, no matter what your topic is, you will most probably pass your proposal, especially at the MTH level. It's this sharpening of your problem that is the hardest because it requires you to know the material. It requires you to know what is written in scholarship and to have a perspective about all that is written. And that's hard to get. And that's why it will be helpful to read the how to write the literature review just to get a sense of what that means. But if you can do a good literature review uh, and find an academic problem, I don't see why uh, you will not pass your thesis proposal. Okay, so that's the first part, establish your problem. The second part is establish your methodology. Now, like I said, that in MTH level, not everybody emphasizes this part as much, and it could be different for, for different people. For some people, it requires you to have a clear sense of the methodology you're going to adopt. Like, so you can say, uh, I'm going to interpret the gospels. And I'm going to use the narrative framework. I'm going to use the narrative approach to interpret the Gospels. But not just Gospels, I will take Luke's Gospel and I will use the narrative framework on Luke's Gospel. So that is your methodology where you've taken one particular text and you have uh, sharpened it with one particular methodology, the narrative approach on Luke's Gospel. You can even further fine tune it to, I will be looking at Luke chapter 15 and see the narrative flow of, uh, of the parable, of a parable and see the narrative flow of it, like that, that. So methodology is clearly show how you will address the problem that you stated earlier. Sorry, so I didn't tell what the problem is in that example. So in the example, let's say I was going to look at uh, how we have misunderstood parables. 
uh, it could be a problem. How scholars, some people think that in parables should be interpreted like this. Some people feel parables should be interpreted like this and others feel, feel like this. So I will be looking at a narrative approach of the parables in Luke chapter 15. Uh, I hope I got the reference right. The lost sheep, the lost coin and, and the lost son. Uh, the, those those three parables is it Luke 17 or Luke 15 uh, okay my mind says Luke 15 so I'm going with Luke 15 but uh, I could be wrong <laughs> now suddenly my Bible knowledge is uh, anyway it's in Luke there's one chapter on the lost coin the lost sheep and the lost son so a narrative study of that rather, rather than just a poetic study a na narrative study to see how the narrative flows that could be your method then comes the um, it, it says over here the uh, specific literature review. So over here you say that I've chosen one approach. I've, let's say I've taken Luke's gospel. I've taken the Luke chapter 15 and I've taken the narrative approach. The specific literature review says what have people said about these parables? What have people said about these approaches? this narrative approach. Is there a difference in narrative approach or are we just going to take one generic narrative approach? So I tend to suggest that students have two literature reviews. One is a general literature review and one is a specific literature review. Some people will say, no, no, have both the reviews together rather than have two separate and that's also fine. But in this, there's a general literature review that establishes the field that shows what is happening in scholarship. And in this specific literature review, it is what is happening related to your methodology, to your specific topic. So if let's say I was to study uh, Martin Luther and his theology of salvation, in my methodology section, I will show who has talked about Martin Luther's theology of salvation. And that's the specific literature review. Then we have scope and limitations means what am I going to do and what am I not going to do? And finally, the primary and secondary questions means how am I going to shape my work? What is the main question that I'm going to use to uh, shape my writing. That's all also in the methodology. All this is explained in various question, uh, sections, like in chapter 10, what is a question? So in this, in this case, the so methodology would address all these issues. In some places, it could be up and down a bit, but you have established the problem and you have established the methodology. Now the next part of a thesis proposal is anticipate your thesis, uh, have a sense of it. So the first thing is to establish your aim. The aim, there's, we usually say aim and purpose and many people are not sure about the difference. The aim is what are you going to achieve in your work? Uh, so I'm going to write an MTH thesis. By the end of it, what would have been achieved? What, what is the aim of my work? In, inside, uh, within my text, as I make my argument, what is the aim of my argument? So it relates to my work. The purpose is, what is the purpose of my work? How will my work be used? Does my purpose extend beyond my work? So aim is in my work, purpose is beyond my work. Uh, so what is your aim? What is your purpose? Sometimes you, you can just say your aim and many people are not clear about the difference and that's okay. You don't have to be. But it's good to be clear. You, your work has an aim that you're trying to achieve and your work has a purpose. And for many of us Christian students, the purpose is to impact the church. The purpose is to make a difference in society. So taking the work that we have to, or even to impact further education and further academic thinking. So that is the purpose. And then there is a section where you could offer your hypothesis, where you can say, I think the parable should be read like this. Or you can present a focal theory, the narrative approach, you can clarify it a bit more and present it like a theoretical framework, that this is how we could be using as, as a way to understand. And there's a section over in, in, this, uh, in this book to understand what do you mean by focal theory. But we could have that section, hypothesis of focal theory. But I found that sometimes examiners get very upset if you seem to have decided what, where you're going to land up. So maybe if unless you're asked to do that by teachers, don't put your focal theory or don't put, not you can put a focal theory like a theoretical framework, but don't put a hypothesis because it suggests you've already decided what your conclusion is. So just be careful about that. And then you give your outline. 
what are you going to do in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and chapter five? Usually, uh, there are five chapters in the MTS thesis, so you can actually list the titles. Don't list too much in subtitles, uh, but you don't have to list titles, so sorry. At least what is going to happen in chapter one, what is going to happen in chapter two, so on and so forth, you can list it out there. And these chapter chapterizations should in some ways correspond to the primary and secondary questions. Now, I wish I could explain that more, but this video is going to go too long. So just to recap, a thesis proposal should establish the problem, should establish the methodology, and anticipate a thesis. If you have these three elements in your thesis proposal, you are almost certainly going to pass your proposal. Now, whether you get a good grade, whether you get a B plus, A minus, A, that I'm not sure. But you need to have a sense of these three elements. So a teacher may look at your work and say, it has a very poor literature review. That means you have not read enough. You need to read a bit broader. Or a teacher may say your methodology is weak. So how you are addressing your topic is a little weak. Or it might the teacher might say that, oh, you seem to have already decided your conclusion. So that means you don't have a hypothesis. It's, it's almost like you've decided. You need to have it a bit more tentative. And then apart from these three elements, you need to have a clear title and you need to have a bibliography. The bibliography should be... Uh, good enough that has maybe about 30 sources for uh, for an MTH thesis at least uh, to show that you've read widely and a title should be clear enough to show what your problem is and what methodology you're using to address that problem. Uh, this, this book has sample titles and sample outlines for proposals. So this thesis proposal chapter may have may give you more explanations on what all these elements are, but I would want to encourage you to think if you're if you're struggling with your proposal, think about these three things. Your proposal must establish your problem. Have you done that academically? Have you done that sufficiently? Have you read enough to show diversity of academic opinion? First. Second, you need to have some sense of a methodology of how you are addressing that topic. Two. And third is you need to anticipate a thesis tentatively, but have a sense of where you're going. All the best to you who are writing your proposals. And I hope that quick study guide uh, for chapter, I forgot the name, <laughs> uh, for our chapter 23 is helpful for you to get a sense of what is being expected of you. Okay, all the best and see you in the next video.